Good evening, guys. Welcome to Life Apollos. Happy to have you here as always. Uh, I'm going to do my best to remain chipper and relatively positive throughout tonight's episode. We do have normal news to cover sort of later as we go. Uh, but there's one story in particular that we're going to be talking about tonight that uh, and I'm going to try to do my best here not to get too animated, to get too upset, because I feel like I get myself in trouble when I get too passionate with you guys. But it has got to be one of the more shocking stories I think I've ever seen concerning uh, the automotive world. We're going to get to it in a minute. Uh, as always, guys, if you appreciate the grind of Monday through Friday, I am feeling a lot better, by the way. I'd say I'm like 90% at this point. Uh, make sure to sub to the channel, like the video. We love having you here. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, Beard Nation, welcome to your news of the day. All right, we're going to jump into our main headline story of the day. Uh, this is pretty rough, guys. I'm not going to lie. And honestly, it's just some of the details of what this is that we're about to talk about are just baffling to me in so many different ways. Uh, Jalopnik has the best write-up, guys. We're going to jump right into it. Cop charged with murder after killing 12-year-old in 95-mile-an-hour crash in a school zone. 12-year-old Isaiah Rodriguez died in the crash and two others were seriously injured. It starts off by saying prosecutors charged a former Los Angeles Sheriff's deputy with murder Wednesday in a fatal off-duty crash caused when the deputy pushed his truck to speeds of around 95 miles per hour in a school zone. The article goes on to say the crash occurred on November 3rd, 2021. We're going to talk about that date here in a second, when Ricardo Castro's pickup truck sped through an intersection at more than three times the posted speeds, T-boning the Mercedes containing the 12-year-old Isaiah Suarez Rodriguez and his 19-year-old sister just as school was letting out, the LA Times reported. The posted speed in the area was 35, but 25 miles an hour during school hours, and prosecutors say that Castro was traveling at 95 miles an hour at the time of the crash. Castro's truck launched the Mercedes 75 feet from the impact site, and LA District Attorney George Gascon also announced charges against Castro of vehicular manslaughter and reckless driving, causing great bodily injury. The crash in Southgate, a community southeast of downtown LA, was incredibly violent. Now, I, I can't show you guys the video because the video is just absolutely insane. It is awful to watch. I'm sure it would get our video taken down immediately. Uh, you guys don't want to see it anyway. Just take my word for it. It's incredibly bad. So as we get further and further into the Jalopnik article, uh, some of the next details we're going to talk about in the next paragraph are causing uh, everyone in the comments to absolutely lose their minds justifiably. So the driver Castro's rap sheet when it comes to motor vehicle offenses is extensive with multiple crashes and citations for speeding despite receiving what the sheriff's office called rigorous safe driving training while still a sheriff's deputy. This guy, according to Jalopnik, had an extensive history of bad driving, speeding, and crashes. How was this guy still a cop? I don't understand it. Like, how could you possibly have someone be an enforcer of the law when it's this blatant, according to what Jalopnik is saying? And it gets worse if you can believe that. The end of the paragraph says this. He was placed on paid administrative leave. This guy was paid. If you saw the video, and I'm pretty sure the video was available immediately, how the heck do you put this guy on paid administrative leave? He was eventually relieved of duty 15 months later once charges were filed. How in the world did it take this long? The video was all the evidence you needed. It's like a corrupt legal system. I don't know whatever you want to say, but it's, it's so infuriating to read this stuff. Now, the LA County Sheriff's Department declined to comment on the charges, uh, typical, but issued the following statement. Sheriff Robert Luna expects all members of the LA County Sheriff's Department to always hold themselves to the highest ethical and professional standards. The statement said criminal misconduct will not be tolerated and department members who allegedly violate the law will be held accountable. Uh, I guess that's why they put him on paid administrative leave for, I think it was 15 months. Now, obviously, guys, uh, this is all alleged stuff. They still have to prove this in a court of law, from my understanding. Uh, so uh, everything we've talked about so far is definitely with a big allegedly in front of it. But if, big if here, 
if everything that's being said in the article is true, this is just one of the worst people I think I've ever heard about. How do you go 95 miles an hour in a school zone? This guy allegedly ended a 12 year old's life by driving like an absolute maniac. And, and people are losing it in the comments, guys. He was placed on paid administrative leave following the crash. Blank that, paid admin leave because he killed a kid and ruined a bunch of lies. Police unions are the blanking devil. Uh, administrative leave and only charged 15 months later. How long was he getting paid to sit and do nothing or just process paperwork? How in the blank did it take 15 months to file charges? Charges, not go to trial, not convicted, merely charged. What was there to investigate when all the evidence was on the street in pieces? And I got to agree here, uh, obviously everything is still uh, in the process of going through the legal stuff. I understand that. It's an important part of the process. But, I mean, if you saw the video, it really feels cut and dry. I'm sorry, uh, I read this story and I just got super upset about it. I just, this is reckless driving to the extreme. It's people with an entitlement on the road. It's the ending of a young life, an innocent life. It just makes me so incredibly mad. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave the rest of the link for the Dilopnik article in case you guys wanna go check it out. They did a great job on this. A lot of other uh, news organizations are covering this extensively and I'm glad that they are. And honestly, I just had to cover it. We had to talk about it because I needed an outlet personally to talk about how frustrated I was with everything that happened here. Um, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with the family of the boy whose life was lost. It's incredibly rough. I can't imagine what you guys are going through. Uh, man, very, very rough. Okay, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna try to push past that. I got it out of my system. Uh, let's talk about Tavares, guys. He is back with a video that we told you was coming. My McLaren 675 LT blew up, and it's all my fault. Extraordinarily long form video, if you're at all curious about exactly what happened to the 675 LT, the monster restoration project gone wrong. He has a brand new video for you. It's nice to see him back, even if the circumstances are extraordinarily unfortunate. Link for that video in the description below, per usual. Then drag times with an amazing video, guys. Uh, McLaren Artura quarter mile drag strip testing. So finally, and I've been waiting for this for a long time, uh, we get a chance to see what the Artura can do in the quarter mile. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised uh, and what it ended up doing. I don't want to spoil too much of it. Uh, I mean, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good, uh, but I feel like it wasn't like leaps and bounds above like the 570, but go check it out. Uh, let me know yourself. Would it be enough to buy an Artur over a 570 in your opinion if you had the cash to get that extra little bit? Anyway, go check it out. Great video from Drag Times per usual. Next up, guys, fresh off of selling the Z06, Stradman is now shopping for a new supercar. Yes, all already looking for a brand new supercar. Also clarifying that half of the money from the Z06 is gonna to go to the house. And I think the other half is gonna to go toward his brand new supercar. And he's looking at some crazy stuff too. I think there's an R8 in there somewhere, a 2017, a cheaper R8, but we are talking a V10. Fresh off of selling the Z06, he's already back on the hunt for a brand new supercar. Let me know what supercar do you think he should buy next? And uh, I guess of all the ones that he talked about today, which one would you take for yourself personally? And we're gonna end off our day guys with Supercar Blondie. And the reason why I'm showing you this video is because it is an incredibly amazing car. The Audi UFO uh, aluminum car. This thing, uh, man, I wish we had seen more Audis like this because I love the styling. It is definitely retro supercar styling at its absolute finest, but can you imagine if this made it into production into a larger way with maybe the craziest scissor doors that have ever existed uh, on any car except for maybe like the Koenigsegg Gemera. Go check this out. Pretty crazy video. Uh, I only knew a little bit about this car before I watched the video. I've only seen it a couple times. Go check it out. Let me know. Would you have this car over something else? And folks, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Um, yeah, we ended the day okay. I know we started off with some really rough stuff. Had to talk about it. Every once in a while, there's something in the automotive world that really gets to me. I get a little animated. I get a little passionate. Uh, it's just how it goes. Anyway, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you guys tomorrow per usual. And uh, make sure to stay safe, sane, and healthy out there. We'll catch you tomorrow. That's all I got. Bye.